And of course, there's only one place to kick off our debate this morning. It's the subject of the use of the whip, provoked perhaps by an incendiary headline in Friday's Racing Post, where writer of the year Tom Kerr was discussing why racing will have to bow to the inevitable and ban the whip. In fact, uh, the Racing Post made this their headline on Friday, why racing must ban the whip, with Tom Kerr's piece written on page six inside the paper. And some have blamed uh, the, the Racing Post editorial team for sensationalizing what's just a column after all, a columnist's view after all about this. Um, Declan O'Connell has emailed in saying, I was absolutely shocked by the front page of the Racing Post calling for a whip ban the other day to think that the trade paper, he said, should resort to tabloid-style gutter press, eye-catching headlines is unbelievable. And uh, he says, uh, why are people within the industry making the whip an issue when it is not? Oh. They're just giving oxygen to the anti-racing brigade. It's not the anti-racing brigade. It is indefensible that we are the only industry that you can beat any living creature and get away with it. Yep. Beating animals in the name of sport, whether the whip hurts or not, mm. it's the perception. It's what people think, especially women in fairness, see the animals being hit. Why do it's unnecessary? Mm. They can whipless races. More races are lost than won because of use of the whip. You know, look at head on how they swerve away from the whip. How many races are lost just because of that? But it is morally wrong. And I got the zealotry of a convert. I used to be one that betting shop hit him harder, more, more, my money's <laughs> on it. Jockeys have got this sort of macho image. They have to hit horses to prove they're trying. What a terrible state we're in. You've got to hit an animal to prove, oh, I'm trying my, trying my best. It is absolutely true. Let, you, you tell Welcome to the show, the John McCurick. Welcome, Kevin Blake. Welcome, Simon no. Holt. Let's oh. go. Come on, no, come on, come on, come on Kevin. Show us oh. what we're talking about. Come on, here. You go and hit me. Got a great so you say it on it on here we go. How many people no, have wanted to do this for years? God, that does, it does hurt. I don't care what you say. <laughs> it does not hurt. It, do, it, it, it that hurts. Does not hurt. Sorry, come on. You're a softy. No, no, no you didn't. Didn't, didn't the art hit him properly? Give it I to me. I would say hands are more sensitive than backside. Well, it does. So when I was at Harrow, they used backside. to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> they used, to beat, down now. They used to beat me when I was at Harrow. It hurt. A, a different camera, Mac, in a moment. No. Come before, but, just and yeah. this, Mike. Before we get into the nuts and bolts, and it goes without saying, I disagree with pretty much everything Jana said. But for me, the the. This, the beginning and the end of this debate comes down, and Jan said it doesn't matter, it's, it's all about perception. I would say it's all about the facts, the realities. Mm. This is the whip, mm. right? It is specifically designed to not cause any pain, and it doesn't. It's got a very wide flap. This is all consisted of foam, and it's, it's air filled in the middle. You'll see to one finger how flexible it is. It's designed to flex, and when it strikes, it makes a loud noise. They react, they That's feel the key, uh, that, it? Look, of course, they feel it. Of course they feel it, but it doesn't cause pain. Just like I can feel it when it hits my hand, but it doesn't cause any pain. They react to the feed, to the touch, they react to the noise, and they react to the fact that for 300 years, they have been trained to react to it. There are 500 kilo animals. The, the people that sit on top of them weigh 50, 60 kilos. They're, they're fin finely balanced. You know, the force that they can produce with this tool is not sufficient to have any wild physical impact on the horse, but they've been trained to respond to it. It's like training any animal. I wish we could talk to horses and they could understand what we want them to do. Then there would be no need for such a tool as this, but they can't. We have to teach them to respond to certain triggers, and this is our trigger. And if you take this away, and take it, you know, if we uh, create, and I don't even think John would, 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 um, would believe in taking it away completely. No, no, it because must be used for steering purposes, safety reasons, yeah. absolutely right. Cor no correction. 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 correction, correction, absolutely yeah. right. Okay. It's yeah. mm. hitting animals. Can't we get it out of our mind? Simon, you haven't come got on. to hit mm. you. I can see you. Well, Mac is talking about perceptions. Yes, yeah. which it is. And so was Tom Kerr. But yeah. they're misinformed perceptions. Right. That's I mean, it. You are yeah. pandering. But you will them. never educate people. You never say, I'm hitting a horse, but it's not really. It's so not hurting. So you Matt, give up. So why, you why don't even try. Well, why? Do you don't even no, well, try me, to educate. I put the argument the other way around. Say the whip had never been heard of, and somebody comes along and says, I know how we'll make horses go faster. We'll hit them. There'd be uproar. Well, Nobody would but say there would, it. But that's the point that, that the that's guys are making, point. the point that I'd make as well, John, is that this is... They did a survey in Ireland a few years ago, okay, and I think it's fair to say Ireland is a much more rural-based country than, than Great Britain. In head-for-head 
racing would be a more popular sport in Ireland. They did a survey across the general public to assess how racing is perceived. I think 61% of the respondents went into the column horse racing rejectors, those that are not into racing and will almost certainly never be into racing. If you did the same survey in England, I'm sure that number would be much higher. Mm. We, as a sport, have to stop being so insecure and face up to the reality that the vast majority of people in this country and other countries, they'll never be into racing. They don't care, yeah. they do not care, That's they right. never will. Why? And, maybe, and they're misinformed generally, because of course, we associate the word whip with punishment, with pain. Yeah. You might look at this and say, oh God, that looks a bit severe, but it's our job, mm as a sport, as an industry, to educate people, to give them the opportunity to get this piece of equipment in their hand. And I would defy anyone that has never held this before. And it is a big issue. I did a poll on Twitter the other day. 75% of the respondents, and bear in mind, the people that are on my Twitter are very much racing people. Sure. 75% yeah. of people had never had the opportunity to hold this. Mm -hmm. And that is a vast failure amongst British and Irish racing authorities that they haven't given people the opportunity to hold it. Because it is, I'm not going to say it's harmless, but it's, it's close to it. It's it, not it's cruel, though, is not, it? Absolutely We've not. Just absolutely it's not. It's not cruel. No, but the thing is, use the example. So what Jordan, do you want about? We're talking about perception. Andy Dunn, who's a Mirror Sports columnist, he wrote this week: misuse of the whip means belting their horses too many times. And we that's have to, we the have image to, that we use. That's yeah. what people see. You're never going to reverse. That's what Tom Kerr was saying. You are never going to educate people who watch a horse being hit and say, "Oh, it's not, it's not harming them. It's not hurting them, making a difference." You'll never convert them. But Matt, and it's wrong. Oh, but these, these are wrong. people that probably are never going to get no, into no. racing anyway. No. Because well, we're are, never, well, never going to get them There anymore. are worse things yeah. that can happen to a racehorse than yeah. being struck with the whip, as we know. Yeah, yes. okay? you, well, so they're not going to buy into it. Which mm. human beings and everything else. Why is no other living object are you allowed to hit? Tell me, why is just racing have we come up, we've got to use the whip? Okay, well, let's, I'm, I'm just going to, I think since 2012, I think on, on equine-related welfare issues, and when they, when they changed the, 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 the rules regarding regarding the use of the whip, didn't they? And they brought in that standardised whip a few years ago as well, Kevin. Mm. I think we can hold our heads up pretty high yeah. in British racing. Grand cars, National, fantastic yeah. example. Mm. All, all the traditionalists saying, oh, the Grand National not the same. I can't, I can't speak, Mac, I can't no. speak for, uh, I, no. I sometimes, I watch uh, Stateside on, on ATR here mm -hmm. a few mm -hmm. times, and I curl up sometimes when I see how the American jockeys mm -hmm. beat the living out of some of their mounts. Mm -hmm. they, they do, and they hit them in the wrong place. So. It's not just education for the public we should be talking about as well, Kevin. Mm. I think sometimes the riders themselves need to be reminded about where to look, use the whip. It can look, it can look awful. Well, I, think, yeah. I think, and I agree, I think there has to be a focus on jockey's technique as well, because when, when this tool yeah. is used in the correct way, hitting the horse in the, in the correct spot on the hind quarters, and get, they're given time to respond, I don't, I, I personally, I'm not too worried about how many times it's used, as long as it's used correctly, because mm. the, again, the key point is, this does not hurt horses. What's the difference and between Ireland and Britain on the, on the whip rules? We don't have a set number in Ireland. It's let, left down to the stewards' discretion. They're looking at um, frequency, how, not so much frequencies, and how, how much time the horse is given to respond, mm -hmm. and they'll make a judgment call in the moment. And since they, when there was a big Ferrari over here, they had a review as well. They decided not to go with the, the set number, but mm -hmm. they did tighten in and pay more attention to it. The number of whip offences went up for a little while, but then the riders adjusted and they've come back down again. And, and, and there's no question that since 2012, that's that cut-off point when they adjusted it following the Sumion row, etc., on Champions Day. I think it's worked, whip offences well. have come down a lot, they've haven't come they? Down. And interference. Unfortunately, in the big races, yeah. we still tend, tend to get, as we did with James Doyle yesterday. But mm -hmm. one question for me is, what happens if you do ban the whip? We're going to get different results. So we're going to get different horses. So no, yeah, it is important that's 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 because you will, stage of you will the get the Mac. free running type of horse mm. will, will prosper. Right. The sort of professional racehorse, the really good horses we see today, the horses that switch off and then can be ignited and really mm. dig in yeah, exactly. and produce their best, and they are the ones that should be going into the gene mm. pool, exactly. not the free running mm. sorts that fall in a heap. Mm. I'll give an example to you. If I came along now and said, I know how we'll make horses go faster. We'll put electrodes on their private parts and they'll jerk forward. You'd all say, what's wrong with you? It's absolutely terrible. If you would you make horses that, go faster if, if you, you did that. The whip, yeah. That sort of thing could take place in, right. in private, in training. That, that's exactly right. Well, that's exactly, John, yeah, that's exactly yeah, yeah, You can say yeah. jump trainers can put nails in. So they in, could in become unethical training methods this, 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 the That, that is something that isn't talked about very often and it's very important to consider because if you want to fundamentally change the sport as you would if you took away the whip for encouragement, as they have in Norway, 
you, if it won't be talked about very much because it's not an easy conversation to have, there would be some very unethical training methods being used, shocking them, putting a pair of blinkers on them and a lunging ring and cracking a lunging mm -hmm. whip beside, behind them with a view to absolutely frighten the life out of the horses mm -hmm. to get them to run on, on the day that they associate racing with absolute fear and that they'll go without the need for the whip. And that, for me, that's far, far more concerning well, than, you know, a, than a couple of love taps around the backside with not, that. It, it isn't. You see, you're, you're using the same as the Andy Dunn said about belting. You're saying love taps. You know, these are all euphemisms. I give credit <laughs> to Bruce Millington of the Racing Post, the editor, Tom Kerr for writing it, and look back, Sir Peter O'Sullivan, really to the forefront, animal lover, he was against use of the whip. The greatest jockey of them all, John Frankham, he's against it. It isn't nutcases and loud mouths are going on about it. Look, I, I've more seen, I've seen plenty of videos so of John Peter Franken when he was riding. He, wasn't <laughs> he was cutting the them in half. No, no, but he, is, he, is, he, he wants to see the whip abolished. He and there are other people do. With banning the whip. Hmm? He, he does. does. No, no, no. He he did. Did. Was, he if you remember, going back, I think it was the late 70s, 80s, there was a particularly bruising race Chelman. at Cheltenham. 83 at Cheltenham. Drum Larkin at Cheltenham. said he thought it was outrageous. It was. And that's really where the whip regulations began. Mm. And that's when you formed your view. Yeah, it was. Right. But un unlike you, the whip has changed since then, mm. and now it's a much, so much the rules. kinder, mm. and the mm. rules have mm. changed. Mm. But you haven't changed. No, but it's, it's not that. It says Tom Kerr wrote. It is inevitable. Can't you people see it? That's, we will not be doing it in the time. About, you mean, won't I, be beating horses. There's a lot of time for Tom. He's, he's, yeah. a, he's a lovely and, he's a, yeah. and he wrote a really well-balanced piece yeah. there, and as did Kevin on the ATR website. Yeah. But I, I was actually quite surprised to read that word inevitable. Yes, bad. it is. I, I'd never it considered is, that. It the needs, was I have. It needs one court line, case, inevitable. one animal rights lot to bring a court case, and it'll be banned. No well, judge. Well, how how, how could that court case possibly happen? Why? Because how, 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 how can anyone brew it with, 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 with that? What? How? How? It's impossible. It, it hurt me. It hurt it, my it, real side. It did. And I know we just don't show us the wheel marks. And that's the other thing that should be emphasised as well, Mike, is we've used the example of us hitting our hand. With the whip, that's, it's not comparable, really, mm. right? The human hand is, is very sensitive. We are sitting here yeah. ice cold, and we uh, we weigh 12, 13, some yeah. some of us heavier. But <laughs> you know, it's not comparable to a 500 kilo horse. You're hitting them on the backside with a lump of muscle like that. The skin is so much thicker, mm. and at the and, and most importantly, they're in a race competitive situation adrenaline full of adrenaline. Oh. You know, if if you think that doesn't hurt your hand hitting it there, you go out and run a few laps and then hit yourself with it when you're warmed up and. Okay. And, and I'll, I'll throw you this then, it just does, in Max favour, because I'm meant to be the, the, you know, the impartial chairman here. meant to be, be it, be <laughs> it. <laughs> what about producing, uh, okay, use a stick for corrective purposes. Yes. Um, you know, I, I know that if you show, a, oh, riding, which we, we rode a bit a few years gone by, if you show a horse a whip when you're riding it, it does respond if you show it. If you, perhaps you can make a, a whip, Kevin, where... There's, a, there's something in there that clicks very loudly in the horse's ear if, you, if you're showing it as you're riding. Would that not be sufficient to keep a horse running to its best ability? Well, it's like everything. D different horses have different, you need, they need different levels of aid to get the response you want. You know, some horse, like Simon said, you will get a free running horse that will jump out of the stalls and give them every ounce they have for their life for as mm. long as they can. Mm. They obviously don't need any such an aid, but imagine the likes of Brave Inca, Persian Punch, some horses like that that are just naturally very lazy, yeah. very laid back. They need every ounce that, that is permitted to be given with the, with the stick in a race to show you what the, what the full extent of their athletic capability is. And ultimately, that's the type of horse, not, maybe not to that extent, but that's the type of horse we try to breed. We try to breed one that, that will relax, that has a relaxed temperament, will jump out, go as fast as we want to, but when we want them to give their maximum effort, they will give it. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of breed, that's the type of horse we're trying to breed. We've, we've spent 300 years, over 300 years, trying to achieve that. Yeah. So if you suddenly take the stick as a means of encouragement away, Encouragement. We, we, right. you see, these it what it is. It's it's encouragement. That's what it is. Fear. That's what it is. They resent. That's why they swerve away from them. Horses are frightened every second yeah. of their lives. Yeah. That's, that's the way they are. Yeah. We, we bred them for an exceptionally heightened uh, flight response. You watch horses out in the field. If a rabbit jumps yeah. out of the ditch, they'll go like that. Yeah. 
They're frightened. They're frightened all the time. Yeah. They, we bred them that way. Yeah, We've created this breed to do yeah. that. But people use the example of the derby with, with, with the minstrel in Hot Grove. Carson on Hot Grove. Again, it's a, a different era, Mac. A uh, different, era. different era. But the sheer ferocity of piglets rides, and not just on the minstrel, but well, many, well, many others. Well, irrelevant. Roberto. Yeah, is yeah, Roberto is the one. Another one. Another one. But that's been banned now. That's yes. That's that's in the old days. The way they do. But as Tom Kerr said, it is perception. What the public think. We're in a health and safety. Well, speaking of which, can I, say, can I read this out? Stuart yeah. Power has emailed us. He said, every time racing's public image is put in the spotlight, we inevitably hear from the BHA and the racing press that the general public are uneducated and ill-informed about mm. racing. But who are the people in the best position to educate and inform mm. the public by reshaping the way racing is presented and covered? Surely the BHA and the racing press. Exactly. Oh. The BHA is proving for, far more out of touch with public feeling than the yes. real jockey club ever were, yeah. and the racing press are only interested in selling a very narrow view of racing set on the prediction of results, which obviously benefits bookmakers very nicely. Nick Rust was asked about uh, the, the Racing Post headline, the chief executive of the British Horse Racing Authority, uh, and this was his response. I read the article first and I thought the article was very balanced. Um, we made a statement today about our history and record with regard to uh, equine welfare. We should be rightly proud of it in this country. Um, I think we do have to keep on top of public opinion. Um, but I think the sport would expect us to take a balanced approach when looking at the future of use of whip within the sport. The number of whip offences have continued to drop. The standard of riding continues to improve. I think we've got to get our message across better to the general public about um, the, the whip it's used, why it's used, and we also need to continue to educate, says a non-horseman I know, but we need to continue to educate our young riders about what's acceptable and what isn't, so that we continue to improve the standards. But there hasn't been a public outcry about the whip, I mean... No, I think, but I think... Complaints on a daily basis? We, we, I think from within the sport there is there are some strong views about the whip both ways. Um, you know, within the sport most people understand its, its usage and why it's there. Um, we don't get many complaints about that side of things, more about fatality and how we manage that side of things. Um, but I think it is something we have to keep an eye on and we have to make sure, as I say, that people understand just how much the people we're celebrating this week, but the whole of the sport, look after our horses and what a great record we've got. Well, we have to make sure that the whip is understood. That was uh, Nick Russ, the Chief Executive of the British Horse Racing Authority, uh, responding to what he felt um, was the right way to respond about uh, the story in the Post on Friday. We've got a load of response here. And I'll, 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 um, Ashley Coates says the days of Leicester on the minstrel machine gun are long gone. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much harmless, as Kevin says. More should be made of winners being hit too many times and keeping a race. That's another issue altogether, uh, Ashley. Um, I mean, as we know, James Dore got referred because he's, he's been referred five times in the last few months, so he's and got to go to the BHA but, now. But let's go back to Nick Rust. Yeah. Nick Rust is one of the problems with racing because when he came in, people said, horror of horrors, a bookmaker. Ladbrokes and Corals taking over racing. This is absolutely terrible. I said, it's the, for you kind of people, it's the best thing. Because he's got to go and prove he's not gone native. So every time there's an argument, dispute in racing, Nick Russ comes up against the bookmakers, against the punters. He's on the side of the establishment. Instead of doing what he should do here and say, we're banning the whip, you ban the whip, and then a month <laughs> later, people are forgot about this. Are the bookmakers anti whip then? What? Are the bookmakers? No, anti -whip? because the punters like it. The punters like it. The punters like it. Of course they do. I used to. What about the perception? I used to. I know, terrible. <laughs> no, terrible. You just said, I used you just said to. the general they public. They do. They hate the whip. You said it's no. the perception of the public. No. Oh. The general public, outside just of the punters, the people we want to bring into racing, I think we're our, family, our family is diminishing and it'll be dwindling is if it? we keep on with them. It is. Good less Atten less attendances are greater than ever. No, no, attendances, you see, and the TV figures and everything like that, and people watching, the, the interest that there is. You go out in the, in the old days, people knew who won the derby at the Grand National. Now, do they, when you ask them? And is that, is that because of the whip? I tell you, people like Ryan Moore, mm. you could have um, uh, virtually the greatest jockey, apart from the greatest jockey, um, Tony McCoy, all those kind of people could go into a tube station and let nobody recognise them. Is that because There's of the whip? Only the Tory is the only one in racing. No, but racing Racing is diminishing in popularity. Only probably the Tory that's, Leicester figure would, would, would pre yeah, no, but about, that's what you're saying you, about yeah. the, the image oh, and no. perception. Well, it's hard of enough racing. to get the message the, out there in the first place. What do you think place? the perception is of jump racing? Not jump racing is the same with the whip. The same with the whip. That's terrific. So would you ban it? No, no, I wouldn't ban it. Why not? I'm, Horses, enough for horses banning. get killed. Oh, horses get killed in the stables. So get, 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 yes, get, exactly. they, they get killed in the. Of course they do. 
and they're brilliantly looked after and all that thing. We've got to make that absolutely clear. But the fact is that whipping horses in the name of sport is wrong and we cannot realise it. And people like you are the old traditional ways. We must go and do it. Why can't we look at what we are morally doing? As Tom Kerr points out, you will never convince the public that it's right to hit an animal. That's what we're doing. It is but wrong. Well, there was okay. a racing there was post a, Twitter there was poll. There was a Twitter poll. Let's have a look at the yeah, racing, racing people. Racing people. It's, yeah, it's yeah, racing well, people, okay. though. That's 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 we've got to start somewhere, man. Yeah, but they're all it's, like you. Just, the Racing Post asked about uh, yeah. the whip on yeah. Twitter. Should racing ban use of the whip for encouragement? 19%, you know, that's of a fifth almost, said people, yes. Of course they do. 81% said no. But, but you, go in, you go into a brothel and ask the clients there, do you believe in brothels? And 90% of them believe in brothels. You don't. How's that? It's interesting. interesting. <laughs> 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 as, a, as a regular client. <laughs> but you know, but that the, is the most bizarre yeah, comparison. Yeah. No, but you're looking when the at wit is being but discussed, Of course, the racing people are going to go along. Yeah, they're, 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 like they're informed. They're informed. They have an informed opinion. Informed. You're talking about people that have an uninformed, no. educated no. view. No. That, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, but this is hitting me, you can't think, realise think, it. Mike, one of the best analogies, when this came up about five years ago, one of the mm. best analogies was made by Midland trainer Mark Johnston, and he compared it to a cornerman slapping a box around the face. Wake mm. up, concentrate. Mm. And that's what the whip is good for. You know, mm. the horse concentrating. Yeah. When it's just getting a little tired, <laughs> come on. Well, look, the take oh, yeah. the, the, that's an interesting the, point, actually. The conclusion mm. that I made in all this, I think education is, needs to be such a focus because we've totally neglected it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Kate Austin on Twitter actually got in touch with me and she said that she's been racing in France and when you walk into some French race courses they'll have a stand there explaining the whip. Oh, you know, really? and explaining the details of it and the realities of it. And why aren't we doing that? It should yeah. be at every single race course in Ireland and England. Because yeah. those are the people you need to educate, the so ones within the sport. These things should be easily accessible on the track so people oh, can yeah. actually pick them up. Pick them up, have a look, are, and have a see what they think of it. And, and yeah. Because the fact that 75% you know, of the respondents to my poll had never held one, I just found that I, I expected it. Mm. But still, when you, when you think about it, when you really think about it, informed racing people that love the sport, they, they're pretty much uneducated about the whip by what they've heard. They've never had a chance to make up their own mind well, by holding funny. it. I mean, Kevin, I know you've probably got the same as well. I've got members of my family who aren't the least bit interested in racing. Mm. If I take them along or show them race on television, then they, they do raise concerns sometimes about the whip being used mm. in a driving finish. Yeah, but apart from riding, those people who have S and M, they know about the whip. Who else will have held the whip <laughs> apart from riders <laughs> and S and M? Well, well, who it's else? Going you tell me, why should, why should, it isn't. We don't want to know about your private seven, habits. No, Matt. but Come seventy. On. 5% of people have never held a whip. That's understandable. But, Who but, else would? but the, 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 my point is that the, that number should be 0%. You know, for racing, for people that are into racing, the people that are already involved, that are fans of the sport, that come racing, they should be given the opportunity to hold it because it is hey. an integral part of the, 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 the of racing and they need to know for their own sake and for they'll be ultimately be the best ambassadors that horse racing can have is is the people that are into the sport if one of their mates say oh gee the horse has been whipped that's horrible I say, well actually if you hold the whip it's it's, it's pretty harmless it's not a big yeah. deal yeah, i it's would like noise. i would like to get the viewers out there to have their hands held out and would slash down it does hurt it's, i don't care what no, you no, say no, it hurts it, it, it does not hurt it, you've had far right, come on, give it to me give it to me give it to me let me do it come on don't, don't, go no on. acting. No, no. <laughs> you, you, would, you would have had far worse beatings at Harrow. Harrow. Absolutely. This should, this should be second go nature to you, your soap dropping days. No. <laughs> well, I'll do it to you. Come on, come on. Right, here we go. <laughs> now, here we go. <laughs> Keep it below shoulder height. <laughs> and give me time. Well, you missed this. Miss. <laughs> <laughs> give it another go. Uh, uh, oh. On that. Oh, and I got the, the shaft there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you in the wrong place, yeah. I'm going for a break. Time out. Time out. <laughs>